Definitely gonna break an ankle. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. Good day, dear people. So it's a fairly simple concept. The more time you spend out and about, the more you're likely to see. And the more you see, the higher your chances are of capturing good photos and footage. So I've decided to spend the next seven days on the trot in this same area of woodland. And although there's no way of telling exactly how it will go, I do have a fair few tricks and ideas up my sleeve to help me capture all the amazing wildlife here. And I'm buzzing to get started. Day one in the woodland came after several days of consistent rain. As a result, the forest floor was holding about as much water as it possibly could. This of course meant that there were plenty of crystal clear pools and streams about, which seemed like the perfect place to start looking for wildlife. It wasn't long before I spotted a pool with a substantial amount of frog spawn in it, that seemed like the ideal location to submerge a GoPro for the day and see what else lay beneath the surface. My hopes were pretty high, especially given that while setting up, I spotted the distinctive movement of a newt as it darted into the leaf litter. I left the GoPro to do its thing and in the meantime set my sights on capturing footage of the nearby streams before they started to dry up. <sighs> now, <laughs> I want it to capture this place as it is at the moment. So, I'm going to try and take advantage of this before anything else because this is the thing that might change. Especially why there isn't any golden light because the highlights of the water will expose much better with flat light. I didn't really think this through though. After getting a few wides of the streams and with the day slowly coming to an end, I took the opportunity to capture some golden hour goodness before retrieving the GoPro to review the footage and see if the spy in the water managed to capture anything of interest. so the touch screen works better. Initially, I thought the moving leaf litter was a sign this hadn't worked, though to my surprise, multiple newts eventually made an appearance, albeit blurry ones thanks to them being too close to the camera, but at least now I had an aim for day two. Day two, a very windy and overcast day two. After reviewing the footage last night and discussing it with a friend, we noticed something that you may have picked up on. The newts in the footage were surprisingly blue. <laughs> of course, some of that was exaggerated by the camera and if you look along the edges of some of the submerged branches, you can see a tint of blue. So it's not quite as blue as it's seeming in some of the clips. I'm no expert, I may be missing something, but having discussed it with a couple of friends of mine, there's a few options out there. We think they're either absorbing something in the water or they're an exotic species, unfortunately. So in order to try and figure out what exactly is going on, I've returned with some specialist gear that's been lent by a friend of mine, Jack, who's been on the channel before, and you may remember, but I've not actually had a chance to play with this yet, which is, uh, Something I'm very much looking forward to. Can't wait to dive in. For those of you unfamiliar, this is the Lauer 24mm and it allows for some rather unique shots. Firstly, it's a wide angle macro lens which isn't too common, but perhaps its most interesting attribute is that the end of the lens is completely waterproof. Unfortunately, the downside to all this is that it's fully manual and the lowest aperture setting is f14, meaning that you need a lot of light. Having said that, it does in fact have lights built into the end, which you can power using an external power source, 
but it does risk disturbing animals like newts. We have the first little clip of a newt, and I'll play it for you now. I saw a lot of movement, so I just hit record. I've got a very thin area of focus, so I uh, put that slap in the middle, just hit record, and tried not to move it, and the little newt poked its little head out and swam across the screen. It's, I think it's just a common new. I think it's just a common new. Um, there may be, the patterns are still a little strange um, for me, but I, I'm no expert, like I say. Uh, I will be showing this to friends who are and seeing what they think. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool day so far. So I'm actually going for something a little bit different at the moment. I've just nestled the lens on top of the um, frog spawn and I'm trying to get a shot to show just how dense and well protected the frog spawn is. And I've been mucking about with a few settings and I think I'm going to try a focus stack to try and just get as many of them in focus as possible. Um, the lucky thing about frog spawn is because it's so well compacted, it just doesn't move once you're locked off on the tripod. So I think I'm going to try for the first time a bit of focus stacking, but if not, here's the final image anyway. Well, that didn't work. I'm not happy with this shot really. The background is too vibrant, the focal point is ambiguous but not in a purposeful way which I find distracting, and everything appears a little soft. But it's the start of an idea at least. With a small win under my belt in the form of the newt footage, and with no signs of the light getting any more dramatic or just generally brighter, I decided to head home. But tomorrow I'd return fresh, with improved knowledge having looked over the previous day's stuff, and with brighter skies which would allow me to get much better shots of the newts. Right? Day three, and the idea today was to return and improve on the stills and footage that I managed to record of the newts and frog spawn yesterday. I've got the same specialist equipment with me, so I was all set and ready. However, as I was walking along the main route into this particular spot, I came across something that I sort of knew was here, but really wasn't expecting to see. And I have to say, it's arguably way more fascinating and interesting. Check this out. So I know what you're thinking. Why is it all that interesting? It's just some ants. Well, that's kind of the point. It's not just some ants. This behind me to the untrained eye on the surface of things appears to be just a strangely neat collection of pine needles, but it's actually a dormant wood ants nest. Throughout the winter months, there's almost no visible activity, and over time, they flatten down to ground level. However, in the spring and summer, they burst into life, and these ants' nests, which can start off at around a dinner plate size, can slowly build and mature into ones that stand nearly two meters tall, holding around 250,000 ants each. Which is incredible, considering this small patch of woodland holds roughly 20 of these nests at around this size, which is mind-blowing when you wrap your head around the numbers that that involves. Now I have managed to film and photograph these a little bit in the past, in fact last year, but the reason I'm really excited right now is because I've never come across a nest on the day that it started building. And the reason I know this to be the case is because I've been in this woodland the last three or four days walking straight across this nest every day <laughs> because it's en route to the main spot. As a result, I know that this is the first time this year that there's been activity visible in this nest. Perhaps predictably, I decided the other nests were worth checking out. So I dashed across to the biggest one I knew of which had barely shrunk over the winter. <laughs> Bear with me with the shaky footage on this one. <laughs> Definitely gonna break an ankle. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. Usually activity on nests like this is much more spread out. Seeing them so tightly packed together was really new and exciting, so I decided to try a different type of shot. The idea was to get a wider angle, more distant shot, so that when you looked at it, you thought it was some kind of landscape taken from a plane or using a drone. Sadly though, I think it's fair to say it didn't work. For me, the size of the pine needle stopped you ever thinking that this could be something far bigger than it actually is, and the shot just ended up being a bit boring or confusing. But it's always worth trying something new. I think I'm gonna have to call it a day, stills-wise and then I'll come back tomorrow when hopefully we will get, for the first time this week, some actual daylight, <laughs> which will be lovely. Um, yeah. So with there being no signs of the light improving, I decided to pack up. 
though before I put the camera away, there was something that caught my eye earlier in the week that I felt needed photographing, if only to work out exactly what it was that I was looking at. Now, before I do call it a day, stills wise, there's one shot that I've got to get because I'm utterly perplexed. I saw it on the first day and I said then the only way I can describe it is frogs born in a tree. <laughs> and you're gonna think I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but I'm gonna get this shot. It's not gonna be a particularly good shot. It's more of a curiosity that I just feel I need to capture. <laughs> It can't be, surely. I think it is. <laughs> what? That is frog spawn up a tree. That can't be right. I must I must be lacking something in my knowledge of the natural world within the UK. Rest. I mean yeah. Definitely frog spawn in the tree. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it, aren't I? So, I've decided, climb up to the point where I'm standing. The main risk is that I don't have a strap for my camera. <laughs> graceful, as, as, a, as a graceful thing. So I'm going to put the cam just the camera, I'm gonna put into the camera bag, put it on so it's super lightweight, Climb on up, fully stand, swing the bag around once I'm stood up, grab my camera out, drop the camera bag because it won't have anything in it, and then reach without falling or dropping the camera, and hopefully grab a nice wide, an wide angle shot. After successfully capturing photographic evidence so that my friends didn't think I was completely mad, I decided to look into this a bit more. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait until part two to see what I discovered. As always, thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. If you have any questions or just want to share your thoughts, feel free to do so in the comments below. And don't forget to click on the bell to turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.